Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today I'm going to be showing you all about the immersive Ashlands server, the Path to Durnween. This server is free for any of you to join, and if you want to learn how to, all you have to do is keep watching the video and you'll get all the information that you need. But I must warn you, this isn't like a regular Valheim experience. You see, the Ashlands itself is really, really hardcore. So, in response to that, I made a new way to interact with the No Portal, No Map content. To make the Ashlands more approachable, it's been connected, and there's one huge path that you can access. Eventually, the path turns into this sky platform, which is invincible. Players are free to build off of it and travel using it as they see fit. Because on the normal immersive mode experience, accessing the Ashlands is such an extreme thing that most players just never will experience it. Now, this sky platform doesn't go on forever. In fact, it actually has two distinct phases. The first thing you'll reach on the sky platform is the floating dockhouse. This is a communal base designed to be used by multiple players in the beginning as they first start their Ashlands progression. This base features a communal bank. All resources in this area are free for people to use and take so that they can try building in the Ashlands. Additionally, there is space available for players to build rooms. This is my room here. Players are meant to come here and start to progress in the Ashlands, get some Ashlands gear crafted, and then once they've crafted some gear, well, there's a whole new land further down ahead. As we keep following the path, we'll eventually find the Citadel. This wall is made invincible, so it's literally impossible for enemies to do anything to it. They cannot pass this wall. There are three exits, the Eastern Gate, the Northern Gate, and the Western Gate. Once you pass these gates, all hell breaks loose, because this isn't just no portal, no map Ashlands. This is hard mode Ashlands. And trust me, you may think you have a system down in normal mode, but it probably won't work in hard mode. Let me give you a little bit of a disclaimer. You may be used to being able to get some really badass armor that basically makes you an untouchable killing machine. They're gonna kill you almost instantly. It's really challenging in order to stay alive. But you don't have to worry as much about dying, because even though the difficulty on this server is hard, the death penalty is set to minimum. This means that when you die, you're gonna keep all of your equipped gear. If you expect combat to be the same as what you're used to on this server, you're gonna be disappointed. Be very careful with melee. It is almost always not as viable. Now, don't get me wrong, if you really know what you're doing and you have really high block skill, then you might be able to make it work. When you're getting used to this server, I strongly encourage you to use this build. You want to use the shield, so you'll need one eater food, and then also you want the movement speed of the Fenring. Because at first, it's all about exploring and getting to the right place and getting everything set up, killing things and fighting with magic and ranged. For most people, when they enter the Ashlands, if you go naked and that shield breaks, you're gonna die. You need this shield up pretty much at all times. And this is an important part of having a more reasonable experience in the Ashlands, and not just getting ganked by the combat constantly. But now that we have that disclaimer about fighting out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the mechanics of the Citadel. As you can see, we have our invincible wall that surrounds everything. Within that invincible wall are six plots of land. Each plot has a fence showing the area within it. All you have to do is change this sign so that it says your name or start building something there. I have to limit the size of people's buildings this way because otherwise towns become so densely populated, playing near them becomes very frustrating. 
and especially combat. That's why this town is big enough and has enough of a buffer zone to ensure that monsters never get inside. While it is true that there are monsters right outside, it's gonna be unideal to interact with these monsters when players are on the server and in the town, because this will create some lag. That's why it's really important that the town itself is in a contained area that players can go away from in order to experience combat together. So, over time, players will join, occupy these slots, and then we can get into the long-term project for this server. Ashlands has these fancy locations called Places of Mystery. There's three on every server. If you find all three of these locations, you'll be able to craft the Dernwin Sword, which is currently the only sort of legendary item involved in a quest line. Oh! <laughs> that was funny. Ah, what was I saying? That's right, you'll be able to craft the Dernwin Sword which I'm mispronouncing most likely. It's a really cool flaming sword that they'll probably buff up and do something for for the deep north. And I mean, oh, come on, look how badass it looks in its hilt. Oof, flaming sword on your back? Now that's something else. <clears throat> to get the flaming sword of legend, you'll need to find all three pieces of it. And that's where the progression of this server comes in. On a normal server, these things don't respawn, so once one person has a part, nobody else can get it. But on this server, it features respawning locations. Certain locations will force respawn, so even if players build nearby, the building will just get destroyed and this location is coming back along with that piece of the sword. The first piece is very close to town. But the second and third pieces are much further out, and building up a path to those pieces is going to be the source of progression for the server moving forward. I'll be working on the path from the citadel to the pieces of Dernween. But this isn't all that the server has to offer you. Let me show you some of the other things that make this server very different. Flame metal locations are easier to gather from because they're part of the force respawn. They still collapse back into the ground, but every three or four days, they're going to come back in the exact same spot. And the path itself also passes by a few of these spots, making them easier to access than what you're used to. And it's true, I know, I can be a bit masochistic with the hard difficulty and all that, but it's not just about making the game harder for you. I only do that so that the game lasts longer. You need the difficulty. You need to be scared of the world out there. But you also need safe places where you're not in danger for the most part. This allows different kinds of players to enjoy the experience, whether they're builders who want to get some Ashlands building in, or they're people who like to fight and enjoy combat. Fortress raiding, a large part of the Ashlands experience, has been changed on this server. Because the fortresses themselves that are in the Ashlands, they're part of the force respawn. So you can find a fort location, and then it's going to be re-inhabited every couple of days. The Path to Dernwien server features charred invasion fortresses. So, the forts aren't just limited to the Ashlands biome. I've modified the loot of many of these outside of Ashlands fortresses so that they contain large amounts of iron and some other rare materials. As a general rule of thumb, you'll be able to find these forts where any tall mountain is. I want to encourage players to go to older biome. The main difference with the fortresses on the mountain peaks is that they don't respawn, meaning that players can convert them into bases or turn them into catapult spots to travel more quickly through the No Portal server. The path to Dernween may be long and arduous, but there are many player-built bases along the way. Loads of incredible builders have visited the server over the past five months and added some awesome contributions. And progression-wise, this server isn't like other servers. You don't need to make a new character or be part of the original wave of players who played on this server. I try and keep this server more like a mini MMO. 
where new waves of players come in over time and revigorate the server by adding life to it. I have to change all the mechanics because regular Valheim doesn't work that way. You can't just have a regular Valheim experience and then keep reusing the same server because all the resources get used up and the boss progression is all weird. So that's why for this server, it's not about boss progression. All these bases you find are communal. You can go visit them and build stuff and use what you find. That's why it's so important that the combat is so difficult. Because the whole progression is traveling down this path. If you can get to this point along this path, there is a whole fleet, an invasion fleet. You don't need to kill the queen to get a boat. You can just take one of these and then try your luck. And this is if you don't want to go down the safer option of just traveling down that skyway I showed you earlier. So let's say you join the server on a new character or an existing character. The progression on this server is pretty much based on how much of the path you can manage to travel down. When you first start the server, if you follow the paths, you'll eventually get to a communal dock house. This area is free for people to use and as you can see, many people have made basic bases here over time. If you want to progress through the Bronze Age before you travel too much further, then this is a great place to try and do some of that. But when you're feeling up for it, you can get into one of these boats and make the pilgrimage over to Hilder's Meadow. To get to Hilder's Meadow, you'll need to sail due west. If you look up in the sky, you'll be able to orient yourself using the World Tree. Hilder's Meadow is directly where the World Tree's biggest finger points at. So if you just keep going this way, you'll eventually reach the meadow where it all begins. This is the entrance to Hilder's Meadow. And you'll find yourself at the town that starts the path to Ashlands. This town is fully equipped, starting with a communal dockhouse built by volunteer players, and many other features on the way to a medium-sized mountain. Because this server has been played on already and features respawning resources, you'll find that there's plenty of different bases to stumble upon to take shelter in, making it easier to navigate and to travel around the world without the map. This is Hilder's Mountain. It's the initial mountain for players to experience to really get their feet wet in the mountain's combat. This whole area around Hilder is where a huge portion of the previous game has taken place. Players built many different bases and towns in this area, and I had to move them around to reduce lag. So you'll often find bases along the main path. The path to Ashlands itself starts right next to the communal dock house in Hilder's Meadow. By going across this bridge, you have now entered the path to Ashlands. And this path goes all the way to the Ashlands. It's quite a trek. The path goes on and the path goes on and on and on, and is marked by special lighting. So, even when the server is dark at night, you'll still be able to see exactly where the main path is that you need to follow. The path goes on and on and on, and there's some player bases from the past, and then there's also huge player bases from players who still play these days. And this is why I tell you, you can join on an existing character, or you can make a brand new one to start the experience. Because progressing down the path itself is the progression on this server. You don't need to worry about killing bosses or anything else. It's all about exploration and building and combat. The bosses have, for the most part, become an optional experience that's available to players when they want to group together and have it. But they're not forced to fight the bosses to get the progression items that they need. Instead, players can just travel down this path, and the further they get, the further progression they have access to. And as you keep following this path, Eventually, eventually, eventually you'll reach the end of the path and the beginning of the skyway that you saw earlier. 
The Skyway goes all through the Mistlands, all the way across the ocean, and into the Ashlands. But you'll notice that these Mistlands look a little bit different. They're not full of mist. And that's because this server features two levels of Mistlands. The first Mistlands you encounter doesn't have deep mist. So you get to see the Mistlands in all of its beauty without mist for the most part. But then as you progress deeper into the Mistlands, you get to the second level of Mistlands, which has full mist and is much harder to navigate through. This is my way of dealing with the mist. If you want to play with mist, here's your place. If you want to play without, then you gotta go to the earlier spot. Either way, you'll find that there's plenty of bases along the way acting as checkpoints for you to stop and save your progress, and eventually you'll be able to make it all the way to the end. For now, I'll be waiting here at the Citadel getting ready to start working on the path to Dernween. And that's it! If you've reached this part of the video, you must genuinely be interested. So here's the information that you need. All you need to do is minimize this video and look in the top of the description. You'll find a link to a specific Discord channel. This will give you access to the Poolside Discord channel. Now, the poolside isn't my Discord channel, I just have a spot on it. The server itself is actually ran by Splash of Pain and Captain Crumbs, who both make Valheim content along with some other games that they livestream. They often have these building challenges running, where you build a wall or build some specific thing within a constraint, and then share it in this channel. Their recent one is to make furniture out of the build pieces in Valheim. So you can see that some people have done that really well. Like, look at that. That looks badass. And this is a fantastic way to get some brainstorming and also to get more connected with a community of other players who like Valheim. So this Discord server, again, it's not my Discord server. I just have a spot on the Discord server. So not only will you get in with me, but you'll also get in with this really cool Valheim group. Once you join the server, you'll have to do another step in order to access the login information. You'll need to go to the Channels and Roles section, and then go to Browse Channels. From here, scroll down until you find the JP Valheim section. You can look for the little parrots. That's how you find it. And then click on this follow category over here. That's going to enable all of my Discord chat channels, which will show up on the left after you do this. From here, you'll need to go to the server info section, which will show you how to log into the game. This is also where you can see the exact features of the server. It also includes a map that includes all of the charred fortress locations of the server and the path itself. And if you scroll up, you can see the rules for all of the force respawning and all of the soft respawning. And if you scroll all the way to the top, you'll find the login information for the server itself. And that's it. That's technically all you need to do. This is not a paid server and it's not even a private server. Anybody is welcome to join and have the experience. Everything you do on the server is pushed to Discord. So this shows everybody what you're talking about when you die, when you log out, and when you log in. So just keep that in mind because <laughs> it makes for some really amusing reading when people are dying a lot. And I tend to die the most, so good luck dying more than me. And that's it for now, everybody. If you want to support my work, or make something like this yourself, then consider setting up your own dedicated Valheim server. I've got loads of content about everything you need to do to manage it and make these custom experiences have you, as you have seen on this one. All you have to do is go to zaphosting.com slash jpvalheim and you can get a server up and running in 10 or 20 minutes. It's really quite quick and easy to do these days. And I'll see you in the path to Dernween. Bye bye Ah uh, yes, one more thing. The flame spreads here. This world has the fire modifier on, so you'll have to be very careful with your wooden buildings early in the game. Just a warning.